Every so often, I just need to post a good old-fashioned girl power video, as is my right and obligation as a female vlogger. This will contain a few small spoilers and no theories for the movie. I just want to talk about the female characters this time. So, if that's not the type of video you were hoping to see, you have my blessing to click away now. Full disclosure, I was going to wait to see Black Panther when it came out on Blu-ray, but my son was so hyped up about this movie that we went to see it on opening night. And I went in there, having seen really no good plot showing previews and knowing very little about the Black Panther comics and I wondered if it would match up to all the hype and it sucked me in. There were some issues with the movie as there are in every movie. Mostly I would have preferred to not get motion sick three times from the crazy spinning camera. A moment of silence for all the IMAX patrons, RIP. But the real thing that sold me on Black Panther was not the story or the main character or the sort of mystical science in the film that was actually pretty cool. It it was the women. I mean, when I was growing up, all the action movies that I adored had a pretty preset standard for women. We were ornamental in most cases. Even if we had a movie where the girl was the main character and she was kicking absolute butt, like Tomb Raider. Croft is so over-sexualized in general, and I do play the Tomb Raider games I have since the 90s, but you know, you see her revealing outfit and her little shorts, her big boobs, and you're like, is this all we are to you, or boobs and a butt? Because there is nothing practical about this outfit at all. But these Wakanda women? Wow. And I mean, wow. I have frequently described the portrayal of the newest incarnation of Wonder Woman as a national treasure, but these ladies were solid gold. They're different sizes, different personalities, different skill sets, and not one person commented on how they looked, only what they could do. And in that, I found the recognition that the sobbing little girl that lives inside of me has always sought after, that we are not less characters, that we are not ornamental characters, that we do not belong waiting on the sidelines, and that being tough or smart or strong means that you should be standing beside the men, not behind them. Now I'm sorry, I'm about to butcher all of these names, I'm sure, but I'm gonna do the best I can with dyslexia. We have Nakia, who leaves her lavish lifestyle and the love of a prince behind because her true passion is being in the real world, trying to make a difference by helping those in need, especially women who aren't in a position to help themselves. Like, can you even imagine a scenario where the Little Mermaid didn't leave her home to go fall in love with the prince? She left because she saw that the surface world needed her help and she wanted to be an active positive force in the world to do something good? No, you probably can't because until recently we haven't had a lot of good writers that make good roles for women. Then Okoye was easily the most impressive female warrior that Marvel has ever put on screen. Black Widow has her moments and all, but there is so much focus on her boobs and butt and hair and body form in general, that it becomes flat out insulting that Marvel puts so much value on her physical assets. Okoye has no interest in getting dolled up because her job is to fight, not to be pretty. And she even called her disguise in a dress and wig a disgrace. What? A woman on stage that doesn't like mini skirts and fancy hair and makeup and she's not immediately deemed as a lesbian? What? Uh, can I get a show of hands for all the tomboys who love that? Now, I don't want to give away too many spoilers, but Okoye's entire presence as the general of Wakanda was incredible. The fight scene and car chase in South Korea left me mesmerized because I thought I had lost my mind excited when Wonder Woman crossed No Man's Land, but Okoye surfing on a car door took my breath away. It was so flipping cool. And what I most appreciated about Okoye was that when it came down to duty versus personal feelings, she did not hesitate to put her position over everything else. There was none of that oh, but I love him, so I must abandon my job and blah, blah, blah. No, she was like, um, I'm loyal to the throne, honey, and this is what I do. So whatever you're doing, go on bye-bye. I can't help you. Marvel, seriously, thank you. Next, Shuri had my heart as a nerd with social skills. <gasps> They do exist. No, really, it gets old to have the same stereotypes rammed down your throat that if you're smart, you must wear glasses and be socially awkward and only speak in scientific terms that you have to dumb down for all of your non-science-minded colleagues. But Shuri was not only incredibly gifted, she was funny, she was young, she was in control of every situation she encountered, and she wasn't just the tech girl. She could flip roles and be a doctor or a field agent at any given time. <gasps> 
oh my goodness, a three-dimensional female character in a movie that's supposed to be about a guy? I, I don't even know what to do with myself. She is the role model we want 21st century little girls to have. Even the queen mother, Ramonda, did not shrivel up and die because her husband passed away. She said her husband is still right there with her. She kept her head high through all of the insanity. And even when her heart was broken, she didn't fall apart. She kept doing everything she could to continue serving the best interest of her country. And I keep seeing so many comments on like Twitter and such where people are like, oh, this is a black movie. I probably can't relate. No, this is a movie where you need to go grab a little girl that you know and take her to see this because she needs to see that women are more than just pretty dresses and hair and makeup. Now, I know this video is probably going to generate some negativity because I'm a girl saying, hey, girl power is great. But please don't take to the comments with an attitude about how you don't feel like women have ever been misrepresented in film or that there are plenty of female role models in the world. If you feel that way, that's great for you. But why do you feel like there needs to be a quota for how many great role models girls can have? Plus, your opinions are not a mutual experience for everyone because many females are still seeing tons of films that pinhole women into undesirable roles. And that's also in the culture of the film world. I can still remember trying to join film clubs in college. And when I said I felt like directing was my strength and writing was my passion, they would respond with, oh, so producer then. If you don't know, producers are the ones who run around making sure all the details are set up for a movie. They go and make things happen and they usually have very little creative control, more like a film version of a secretary. And producing is a common area that women are pushed into so that studios can say they're hiring women even though they aren't given any power. The truth is there are many films where female creatives are completely forced out. Even if it's a movie that revolves around a girl like Beauty and the Beast or Brave who fired their female director. So even when we have a love interest or a mother-daughter relationship on screen, it's been written and directed by men, meaning entire generations of women are shown role models that aren't even written in a female voice. They're created by guys who don't even try to understand the subtle intricacies of female relationships. And that's where I get irritated with a lot of the Disney movies because it's not that I don't like the Disney princesses, it's that I feel they could be a lot better in a lot of ways if they let more females into the writing room. And if you turn on a classic movie like Alien, Ripley, this tough female lead who seems like a feminist icon, ends up prancing around in her underwear and an almost see-through shirt. That's not done to make the film more realistic, people. That's specifically written into the film to get pervy guys to go watch it multiple times. Now, that doesn't mean that these are awful movies and we should hate them because they're offering fan service, but we can do better moving forward. We can give the next generation of kids a stronger message that equal means equal, not that a girl should be pretty and a boy should be strong. And believing that we should work towards that goal doesn't make me a feminazi. It makes me someone with eyes. Well, that's all I have for now, but this video's not quite over yet. I get a lot of comments that say, do a theory on this topic, but I've already done those theories. So please consider going to my main channel page and clicking on the video tab so that way you can see everything I've done. You will probably find a lot of things you like that you never even knew that I posted. I want to let you know that I also have two other channels, Say Halo Goodbye Gaming and The Family Family Vlogs. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed enough to hit subscribe and share. I can use all the help I can get to let other people know that this channel exists. And if you made it this far, leave me a comment that says something like, hey, I made it to the end. And then let me know what kind of videos you want to see in the future. I can't make any promises, but the more people that request something, the more I can look into it. Okay, well, I love you. I'll see you in the next video.